Hello everyone, my name is Amy. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing this product. For those of you who don't know what this is, it is a hot chocolate. And I didn't think it was hot chocolate at first. I saw this at my local Trader Joe's store and I came across this. I thought it was some kind of fancy chocolate on a stick. Or like sometimes they sell blocks of chocolate that you can melt to make fondue. So I thought it might have been that, but then I looked at it and it said Belgian hot chocolate. I don't drink a lot of hot chocolate. I love it, but I live in Florida where it is hot most of the year, even in the winter it is hot some days. And so it's not really the best weather here for drinking hot chocolate, but Florida does have its cool days. And there are days when I do crave hot chocolate, so I decided to pick this up and try it out and see if I like it. This is Belgian chocolate. And basically, I will open up the box to show you what's inside. But if you can already tell the box is open, that's because I opened it earlier so I could see what was inside of it. But I'm going to actually open the box on camera to show you what's in there. So inside the box, you have these things. You can hold them this way or you can hold them this way, whatever. They look like chocolate lollipops. This is Belgian chocolate. It comes wrapped up in a little wrapping thing and it has a little stick in it, like a wooden skewer stick. And there are six of these in the package. So I'm gonna show you what to do with this in a second, but basically what you do is you take this and you put it in hot milk or hot water on the package it says milk and i usually put my hot chocolate mix or cocoa powder or whatever in milk anyways but you can put it in water and when you put this into the hot water or the hot milk the chocolate on the stick dissolves and then you can use the stick to stir your hot chocolate so now i'm going to show you how it works Alrighty, so the first thing you want to do is grab some milk out of your refrigerator. If you do not like milk in general, or you do not like drinking your hot chocolate with milk, you can also use water. And you would just pour some water into a cup from your tap or wherever you get your filtered drinking water from. Next, you're going to grab a mug from your cabinet or cupboard or wherever you store your mugs. And this can be just any coffee mug, it really does not matter. But you want to get something microwavable. If it's made out of glass, it usually does not go in the microwave. It's a safety precaution because I've heard that glass can explode in the microwave. The next step is to pour milk into your mug. I just want to quickly note that I'm using Horizon Organic DHA Omega-3 whole milk. But you can use whatever milk you want. It doesn't have to be this brand. But I'm sure you know that already. I just wanted to mention. So if somebody's watching this video and being like, oh, she's using Horizon Organic. I have to use that too. The milk you use doesn't matter. It's whatever milk you like. And like I said, if you do not like milk in general or you do not like milk in your hot chocolate, you can use water. And if you are lactose intolerant, you can use like a lactate or some kind of a soy milk as a replacement for regular milk. So, like I said, we're going to take our milk and pour it into our mug. On the back of the box for the hot chocolate, it says to use three-fourths of a cup of milk. I usually do not follow directions, I just pour milk. And when I feel like I have enough, then I stop. And you should know about how much hot chocolate you're going to drink anyways so you pour as much milk as the amount of hot chocolate that you think you will drink alrighty so our next step is to take our mug with our milk put it in the microwave and heat up our milk On the back of the package, it does not say how long you need to heat your milk for. It just says that you need hot milk. 
So I usually do it for about a minute and then I check and see if it is hot enough and if not, I put it for another maybe 30 seconds, maybe even a minute if it's still not hot enough. I just gauge based on the outside of the cup and when my hands are clean, I usually just stick my finger just a little bit into the milk just to deal with my finger and see if it's hot enough. So we're going to set this for a minute and on my microwave you can either do time cook and then type 100 or you can just press the one button and that'll set a minute on the microwave so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just letting my milk heat up right now as my mug rotates in the microwave. Alrighty, so my milk is done heating at a minute, so I'm going to stop the microwave and then I'm going to check to make sure that my milk is actually heated enough. And I can already tell it's heated enough just by the outside of the mug, so I don't have to put it in for any more time. Alrighty, the next step is to take one of these Belgian chocolate sticks out of the package and take the plastic wrapping off the chocolate stick. I cannot do this with one hand, so I'm going to open the package with my two hands. I'm going to put the camera down for a second, and then I will be right back. Alrighty, so this is what it looks like without the wrapping on it. Like I said, this is just a block of Belgian chocolate on a stick. So I'm going to take my block of Belgian chocolate on a stick before my milk gets too cool. And I'm going to put it in my cup of milk. Then I'm going to just swirl this block of Belgian chocolate on the stick until it fully dissolves. take a quick break from stirring to show you what my stick of Belgian chocolate looks like after stirring it in my hot milk for a few minutes. As you can see, the Belgian chocolate on the stick has started to melt off. Alrighty, now as you can see, the majority of my chocolate has melted off the stick. There's a little bit of chocolate left around the bottom of the stick, but not too much. And now that all the chocolate has melted off, I can continue to use this stick to stir my hot chocolate if I think that it is not mixed enough. But I'm going to show you what it looks like after the chocolate has melted off the stick and been mixed in with the hot milk. I'm not sure if you can really see it, but it just looks like hot chocolate. There's nothing really special in there. Obviously, the hot milk has turned a brown color like it does when you add any kind of hot chocolate powder or hot chocolate mix or cocoa powder or anything like that. And now I've got my mug of hot chocolate right here. And you can always feel the outside of your mug if it still feels a little bit hot. Then you can wait for your hot chocolate to cool down a little bit before you drink it. But I'm going to try my hot chocolate now because I think that it is cool enough and we'll see how it tastes. I really like this hot chocolate. I was a little bit scared at first. When I first bought this, I thought it's Trader Joe's and it's gonna be good hot chocolate and not just good in the sense that it is going to taste good because a lot of things I buy from Trader Joe's usually taste good, but I meant that it was going to be good in the way that the ingredients were not going to be as bad. There wasn't going to be as much sugar or I don't know what else they add to like a Swiss Miss hot chocolate. And I love Swiss Miss. But in my family, we eat healthy. So things with a lot of sugar or a lot of other bad ingredients, artificial colors, flavors, high fructose corn syrup, whatever, are not eaten in this family and not allowed in the house. So I knew that Trader Joe's products weren't gonna have as much, maybe not so much on the sugar front, but it wasn't going to have any like high fructose corn syrup or anything else in the hot chocolate. But then I got home and I was reading the ingredients on the back and the first ingredient is sugar. And I don't want you to get worried and think, oh my goodness, sugar, because somebody might 
hear me talking about the first ingredient being sugar and think, sugar, I don't need to buy this. I mean, I was worried too, sugar. And it says 13 grams of sugar on the back of the box. But when I'm tasting this, and I'll take another sip, It does not taste overly sugary. It tastes mostly of cocoa, which I like. I like things that, I'm sorry, I had a little bit of hot chocolate on the outside of my mouth, but I like things that mostly taste like cocoa that don't really taste very sugary. I love Swiss Miss hot cocoa mix, but I'm not a very big fan of things that are overly sugary. And this one has the perfect balance of not so much sugar and not so much cocoa because I don't like things that are overly cocoa-y, I guess you could say, either. Anyways, this is really good and I highly recommend that you pick it up if you see it at local Trader Joe's. And just like any other hot chocolate, you can put whipped cream on this or you can definitely add chocolate chips. Sometimes I like adding chocolate chips or shaved chocolate and to make shaved chocolate you just take a grater like you used to grate vegetables or cheese or something like that and you just grate a block of chocolate on there so you can put shaved chocolate you can add graham crackers or teddy grahams or whatever else you put in hot chocolate you can put chocolate syrup the possibilities are endless anyways i want to thank you all for watching this video i hope you like and subscribe and all the good things i'll see you next time for another video Bye.